So we start. Uh, pricing strategy. Mm-hmm. When we talk about strategy, a strategy is a set of plan that you have designed to meet an objective. That's what a strategy is. So I said strategies are what? Strategy is a set of plans designed to meet objectives. So what is the pricing strategy? When I talk about pricing strategy, these are plans about pricing, which will enable you as a business to reach your marketing objectives. Are you with me? Yeah. So set of plans that will enable you as a business to reach your marketing objectives are what we call pricing strategy. So those pricing strategy, those pricing plans that you have put together so that you can reach your objective in the market is all called pricing strategy. So pricing strategies, strategies could be used for new products or existing products. So you could use a pricing strategy for a product that is still new or a product that is already in existence. So what are the types of pricing strategies we have? We have the first one, cost plus pricing. So this strategy ensures that, that all costs are covered when setting the price. So here you use your markup. So your price will be unit cost plus markup plus the unit cost. So that means markup times unit cost, markup times unit cost plus your unit cost. That's how you set your cost plus pricing. Well, why do you set it? You want to make sure that you cover all the cost of production. So what are the what so what is the what are the problems using cost plus pricing? Number one, it ignores the market condition. So when you are setting your price based on the cost of production, it means you don't care about what happens, whatever price competitors are charging. Are you with me? Yeah. So you need to understand the situation of the markets too. But with cost plus pricing, with cost plus pricing, you 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 wouldn't check about what happens with the market. Especially your competitors. Yeah. So you don't care about what price they charge. You only care about you covering your costs, which is a problem because you need to put into consideration your competitors. Yeah. Are you getting it? Mm-hmm. The second one, it might be difficult to trace all related costs to the production. There are some costs that you won't be able to even trace. There are different expenses you make in the cost of producing your product, which might not even be account- you, which you might not even be able to account for. At that point in time. So these are the problems you face using cost plus pricing. But at least you know what cost plus pricing means. Yeah. It means you are charging a price, price, putting into consideration the cost of production. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yeah. The second one, price scheming. So when I talk about price scheming, I said this is a pricing strategy used by our business as it increases the prices of a product at the initial stage before lowering it. So price scheming means you're charging a higher price. You are launching a product and charging a higher price. You are doing this temporarily to quickly gain a lot of revenue before your competitors start coming into the business, into the market, yeah. or before customers start feeling that you are exploiting them. You know, there's going to be a stage where customers will feel like, why are we buying these products in such an exorbitant price? Why? Do you understand? Before it reached that stage, because you are using price scheming, so you have, you know, you have strategized to temporarily maximize your revenue. Mm-hmm. Is it clear? Yeah. It's a pricing strategy to temporarily maximize revenue before competitors come into the market or before customers start feeling that they are being exploited. Okay. What? Is it clear? Yeah. What are the advantages of using price scheming? Number one. Higher prices are charged in the market where there are people who are prepared to pay them. Businesses will charge higher prices because they know the the customers are willing to pay. Do you understand? Yeah. Also, it allows the business to maximize revenue because you charge a higher price. Temporarily, your revenue will rise. Is it clear? Mm. But what are the problems? Number one, it can only be used where the demand is price inelastic. So if the demand for your product is price elastic, then you cannot use price scheming because customers will not buy your product. But if the demand for your product is price inelastic, you can use price scheming. Is it clear? Two, it could attract competitors. That's another problem. Because you are charging higher price, a lot of businesses could come into the market like, oh, products that you are selling in this market are, are, 
are higher, the prices are higher. So let's start. Let's start the business too. Maybe we can we, maybe we can generate higher revenue too. So businesses are attracted to that business because in that market, uh, businesses are attracted to that market because in that market, businesses are charging higher prices. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Then we go to penetration pricing. So what's for a limited period? So penetration pricing is just like you are entering into the new markets too, and you are charging low price. Low, you are charging a low price to attract customers. As soon as customers are aware and you are able to establish your brand, you increase the price. You know, it's a new product. You need to gain the trust of your customers, especially the potential customer. You need to gain the trust of those customers. So the only way to gain trust is maybe to charge a lower price. So when you charge a lower price, they feel your product. They feel, they feel your product and they see, they, they see satisfaction in your product. Mm -hmm. Then, because then you know, they will start referring your products to other customers. At that point in time, then you can increase the price. That's what we call penetration pricing. So you are charging a lower price to penetrate into the market. Attention. What? Is it to get more attention? Yeah, to get attention, to, so to attract customers to buy your products. As soon as they buy, they feel the products as, with, as quality product or satisfactory product, then the, the demand for the product will increase. At that point in time, you can charge a higher price. Mm. Is it clear? Yeah. So what are the benefits of using uh, a penetration pricing? Number one, it is beneficial when products are targeted at middle or low income consumer groups. So when you, this is beneficial for low and low income earners, that they don't really have so much with them, that they, can't, they don't have that spending power. Mm -hmm. So it's beneficial for those people. Yeah. Two, it can grow sales of a new product quickly. It can also quickly sell your products. It can increase the demand for your products as fast as possible. Three, this strategy can put pressure on rivals. They can also use this strategy to pressurize rivals or competitors to reduce their price. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to the fourth one. Competitive pricing. So when you talk about competitive pricing, I wrote, these are pricing strategies based on price, prices charged by competitors or rivals. So businesses will start charging price based on the prices of their competitors. So you charge the price the same as your competitors. That's what we call pricing strategy. Is it clear? Yeah. So what is the advantage of using uh, competitive pricing? What is the advantage of using competitive pricing? It eliminates price war. What is price war? I said it's a, commercial, it's a commercial competition characterized by cutting prices below that of your competitors. So you're going to, a price war means that you're charging a price below the price of your competitors. Mm. Do you understand? Do you understand what uh, competitive or price war means here? So if you are using competitive pricing, it means in that market there might not be price war or price leadership or price leaders. Do you, understand com uh, do you understand competitive yeah. pricing here? So the advantage about competitive pricing is that it eliminates or eradicates price war. Price war means cutting, cutting prices below that of competitors. Is it clear? Yeah. So we go to the fifth one. No, the fifth one, yeah? Predatory pricing. When we talk about predatory pricing, I said it is a pricing strategy which aimed at eliminating competitors. Yeah, you are charging a price so that your competitors feel uncomfortable and they leave the market. Do you understand? Sometimes we call it destroyer pricing. You understand? So you continue to cut, continue to charge a lower price so that your rivals, your competitors, will leave or will exit the market. Then it becomes you alone. That's why it's illegal. What? Is that why it's illegal? It's a league. Legal. Illegal, yeah, it's illegal because it could lead to a monopoly. It could lead to a monopoly. So, yeah, so what are the advantages of using predatory pricing? One, it could be used to sell stocks that may never be sold or that, are, that, are, that's, that remained unsold for a longer period of time. So you can use the predatory price to sell those stocks you have that you have not been selling for a while. But what are the problems? Number one, it can lead to lack of competition in the market. Especially if the predator is the only one left in the market. That becomes, it becomes a monopoly. Is it clear? Yeah. 
So that's about uh, predatory pricing. Then we go to psychological pricing. When we talk about psychological pricing, I said this implies setting the price slightly below a round figure. So instead of charging two dollars, you charge one point eight five, one point nine nine. You're still gonna you're still gonna pay two. What? You think you're going to pay less? less. You think you're paying less, or you're not paying the whole, but you're paying the whole. So that's what we call psychological pricing. Do you understand? So why do businesses use this approach? Businesses use this approach to target customers that like bargaining. Like they don't want to pay. Please reduce the price for us. Do you understand? So, so businesses, they use that strategy, that approach, to target customers that always like to bargain. Is it clear? Yeah. So we go to factors that determine the most pricing strategy for a particular situation. So before you can start charging, before, before you can start using a pricing strategy, there would have been a situation that warrants it. Do you understand? Okay, so what are those situations? So look at what I wrote here. I said, setting the price is an important marketing decision for a business. Factors that have to be taken into account before the price is set are as follows. One, differentiation and the USP. So... You could charge, you could use a pricing strategy based on how your product is in differentiation and if you have a USP. So look at what I wrote. A business can generally charge a higher price if its product has a USP, that's a unique selling point, or is sufficiently differentiated from those of competitors. So if your product is different, is differentiated from that of your competitors, it has a value that your competitors doesn't have. Your customers are willing to pay for any price, then you can charge a higher price. You can charge, you can use price scheming. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? If you know your product is, is different, it's so different from that of your competitors. The value added is more, you know, is more different from that of your competitors. That could determine how you can charge your price. You could charge higher prices because your customers are willing to pay. As you have created, you know, establish a brand. For your product. You know, when you, are able, when you are able to establish a brand for your product, it means it will lead to brand loyalty. So no matter what price you charge, your customers will always want to buy. Is it clear? Yeah. Two, price elasticity of demand. This is almost the same as differentiation, but it's not the same. It's, it's almost. So for price elasticity of demand, if the demand for your product is price inelastic, that means you can charge a higher price. Customers would still be willing to buy. Do you understand? So, Price elasticity of demand is all one of the factors that could determine if you, have, if you can charge a higher price on your product or not. Is it clear? Yeah. Three. Amount of competition. So, the amount of competition in the market will have a big influence on pricing. If there's less competition, a business can charge higher prices. But if you have a fierce competition, then you can use competitive pricing. You see? If you have less competitors, then you can charge a higher price. But if you have so much competitors, if, if the competition is fierce, then you should use competitive pricing. So that you can still be part of the so that you can still be competitive in the market. Is that clear? Yeah. Then we go to the, the fourth one. The fourth one, yeah. Strength of the brand. How strong your brand is. So how strong your brand is could also determine if you can charge a higher price or a lower price. If you have a strong brand, you can use price scheming. Because having a strong brand, having a stronger brand means you provide quality. Your customers knows you, your customers already know that you can always give quality. Yeah. So this could allow you to charge, could, to use price scheming. Do you understand? And also you can use predatory pricing to reduce numbers of co companies coming to the market. Do you see? So having a strong brand can allow you to use price scheming to charge higher price because your customers will still buy. Or you use predatory pricing to, de uh, to demotivate competitors, to demotivate people from entering to the market. Yeah. Do you understand? So that's about the strength of the brand. So your strength of, the strength of your brand could, increase, could make you to increase the price of your product or could make you to reduce the price of your product so that even competitors will not be able to, you know, to stand the market. The fifth one, stage in the product life cycle. So the stage at which your product is in its life cycle could also determine the price or the kind of price you charge. 
So as the product life cycle changes, the pricing strategy should also change. A new product, you could use a penetration pricing or a price scheming. A product that is going to the end of its life cycle, you could use a predatory pricing, a lower pricing, or yeah, you could use a predatory pricing. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. A product that is in maturity, you could use competitive pricing. Is it clear? Yeah. Then, the other one, cost and the need to make a profit. Whatever price you charge, in the long term, it must be able to cover up for your cost, which will allow you to make profit. Is it clear? Do you understand my point here? Cost and the need to make profit. Yeah. Whatever pricing strategy you charge, in the long term, it must be able to cover all your costs and you should be able to make profit. Is it clear? Yeah. Now, we go to changes in pricing, pricing to reflect social trend. You know what social trend is? The situation of the society. So, what do businesses do? How do they cope using pricing strategy? First way, online sales. So, because they, these days, people, businesses are pressurized to sell even online. So, it's not like you're going, you, you just have to open a shop. You can also sell via the internet using e-commerce. So, if, because you are able to sell online, it allows you to sell with different pricing strategy. So, for you as a business that's selling online, there are different ways you would want to sell. So, there are, different, there are different situations, there are different things you could put into consideration before you charge the price you want to charge. Because it's online, you could put into consideration the internet facility, the amount, you, the cost of your internet, you could put into consideration the cost of electricity, the cost of rent, a lot of things you could put into consideration before you know the kind of price strategy you use. Is it clear? Two, dynamic pricing. Dynamic pricing means flexible pricing way. That means you're going to charge based on the situation of the customers. You're going to charge based on the situation of the environment. So that's dynamic pricing. Yeah. So you can charge different customers with different prices based on their situation. Right. Do you understand? The third one, auction sites. For auction sites, it means a business would rent a site which you have to pay for. That auction site, you pay for that site and you bring your product and Most invite people yeah. to bid for that product. So you sell to the highest bidder. Yeah. Do you understand auction sites here? Yeah. So you rent a site where you bring up the product, then you allow people, you invite people to, to start naming the price for the product. So you sell to the highest bidder. That's what we call auction site. Is it clear? Yeah. Then we go to personalized, personalized pricing. It involves using data relating to a specific online shopper to set a unique price for that shopper. So when you check data, maybe purchasing, purchasing uh, documents or purchasing history of a, of an, of a shopper, you have a specific customer or mm -hmm. a specific shopper. You try to get details about that shopper before you can set a price for that shopper. That's what we mean by personalized pricing. So I have a target. Oh, I want to sell to Mr. Mukta. He's so rich, okay? What does he buy? Where does he really buy? What price do, is he willing to pay for goods? Mm -hmm. Then I will use that information to set my own price to sell, in selling for you. That's what we call personalized pricing. Is it clear? Yeah. Then we go to subscription pricing. Yeah, this implies charging customers a, on a regular, or charging customers a regular monthly fee for the use of a service or access specific product range. So you pay, like what you pay, you pay your subscription for monthly, monthly for your bean spot, or you pay for the dunga for a whole year. These are subscription. So these are also another pricing uh, price method that goes with the social trend. So you know people want to watch football, so they have to subscribe for Sky. They have to subscribe on Sky or Media Set or Media Spot or whatever it is. You have to make a subscription, a monthly one. So that's what we call subscription pricing. And the last one, price comparison sites. This applies to the use of comparison web websites, simp simply to compare the price of goods and services from a range of suppliers. So you could go to different websites to check. You want to buy a car, maybe, okay, you, like the open soup. You check different kind of cars there, the prices here, the prices over there. You check different kind of cars 
with their prices. You can also check the same, price, the same model of cars, but maybe this shop is selling it less, maybe that shop is selling it more. So this is what we call price comparison sites. So you, you, you try to go to different websites to check the prices of goods before you finally buy. Do you have any question about it? No.